Welcome to my Card Suits Crochet Mini Series. In this video we're going to be making the spade. So we're going to start off with any yarn colour and weight that you like. I've got some green Aran yarn here and then you'll just want your matching crochet hook. I like to use a 4mm crochet hook with Aran weight yarn. If you're not sure what size to use I would recommend just using whatever is stated on the uh, ball of yarn that you have purchased. So what we're going to do for this, we're going to be working in rows this entire time. So we're going to start off by doing our foundation chain. You don't need to worry about leaving a long tail at this point or anything, but if you make sure you leave a little bit of a tail, that will be helpful because it will make it easier to uh, knot that and uh, weave it in later on uh, when we finish the piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by chaining two. And then we're going to work a single crochet in that second chain from hook. So skip this one, go into this one here. And what you can do at this point as well, you can crochet over this tail too. Just helps to keep it in place a little bit better. Not the end of the world if you don't do that. We can sort out the tail afterwards. So uh, yeah, just an option for you there. So that is row one complete. We've got one single crochet. Now for row two, we're going to chain one turn and this time we're going to do an increase into our single crochet so that means we're just going to do two single crochets in that one stitch then we're going to chain one turn for row three we're going to do an increase in the first single crochet and then a single crochet in the second so that means we've got three single crochets at the end of row three then for row four, again, chain one turn. We're always going to chain one and turn at the beginning of every row. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an increase. A single crochet. And then another increase. So that gets us up to five. For row five, chain one, turn. And then we're going to do an increase. Three single crochets. And then another increase, so that gets us up to seven single crochets. For row six, we're going to chain one, turn, and this time we're not going to do any increases, we're just going to single crochet all the way across, so that should be seven single crochets. Okay, so then row seven, chain one, turn and do increase five single crochets. And then another increase. So now we're up to nine single crochets. Row eight, chain one turn nine single crochets so just single crochet all the way across row nine chain one turn increase Seven single crochets. And then another increase. So that gets us up to 11. And then row 10, chain one, turn and single crochet all the way across. So 11 single crochets.
Okay, so we're going to start row 11 in the next section and in this row we're going to start splitting off the spade. So we're going to do two bottom parts to this and we're going to crochet those separately. So for row 11 we're going to start off by chaining one as always and turning. Then we're going to work an increase into the first stitch. And then four single crochets. And then we're going to stop there. So that's row 11 for this side complete. Then we're going to chain one, turn. And then for row 12, we're going to work a decrease. Two single crochets. And then another decrease. And sorry, I just realised I didn't really explain to you what I was doing there. But as you can see, you just start off like you're doing a normal single crochet. But instead of yarning over and pulling through both loops on your hook at this point, just go into the next single crochet and also pull through a loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So that gets your decrease done. So then for row 13, we're going to chain one, turn. We're going to work two decreases. And then finally for row 14, chain one, turn, and just do one decrease. Now what we're going to do is cut our yarn, leave a little bit of a tail, because again it makes it easier to um, have something to work with when you're knotting off um, and weaving in the end when we finished everything. But this is what we've got for now, so the next thing that we're going to do is to reattach our yarn so that we can work the other side of the spade. We're now going to repeat all of that again on the other side. So with your spade upside down like this, what you want to do is find the rightmost single crochet from row 10 and then just reattach your yarn into here. Oops, just trying to chain one in here to reattach. And now we're ready to start row 11 once again. So we're going to do an increase and I'm going to be working over the tail as well just to secure that in place and then I'm going to work four single crochets then chain one turn then do decrease two single crochet, decrease, then chain one, turn, two decrease, then chain one, turn, one final decrease and again cut your yarn leaving a little bit of a tail but not too much so that should be enough so the final thing that we're now missing is the little stem at the bottom of the spade and hopefully you can see that when you turn it out this way it does look like a spade now but yeah we just need to work that little bit in the middle so let's do the final steps so as you can see, there's only one single crochet left where we can attach our yarn into that hasn't been worked in yet. So that's the one that we're going to work in. That should be the sixth uh, single crochet from row 10. So I'm just going to attach my yarn. And then start working in this stitch. So for row, uh, this I guess this is technically row 11 because we're doing this on the same level as these other two row 11s, but it's going to be a slightly different pattern. Hopefully that makes sense. But um, what we're going to do is single crochet in that stitch. And that's the first row done. Then we're going to chain one, turn. Then what we're going to do is work an increase into this single crochet that we just did. Then chain one, turn, and just work two single crochets. Chain one, turn, and then again work two single crochets. Chain one, 
turn and work two increases to get us up to four single crochets. And then for the final row, chain one, turn and just single crochet across, so four single crochets. Okay, so now this time when you cut your yarn, leave a long enough tail so that you could sew all of the way around this piece, assuming that you're going to be sewing this onto something. So I always like to leave more than I think I'm going to need just to be on the safe side. So this is what the spade looks like now. So the final step is just to neaten this up and weave in all of the ends that we don't need, i.e. all of the ends other than this last one that we just uh, cut uh, long enough for sewing. So in order to tidy up the ends, the first thing that we're going to want to do is determine what's going to be the front side of our work. So uh, there's no real right answer to this. You can just choose whatever side you like the look of best. I personally prefer the side where I can see the little V's at the bottom of the final row. Uh, that's generally what I prefer to be the front side. And you can see on the back, uh, you can't see those little V's at the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. Just whatever is your preference. Then what you can do is cut any uh, yarn tails that you've crocheted over a few times as well. So for example, I had a little tail here that I just cut. Um, and if you have the similar thing on your work, then feel free to just cut that tail if you did crochet over it. Um, you can see there's this tail here now. Uh, I flipped over to the wrong side of my work. So you can see this tail um i did crochet over but i only crocheted one single crochet over this so i probably want to do an extra knot for this one just to really make sure that it's secured so if i just do that one knot there and obviously do these knots on the wrong side of your work so that these won't be visible when you sew this down to whatever you're making uh, I usually like to do one knot and then just pick a nearby stitch and pull that yarn tail through and then cut it, leaving a little bit of tail remaining. Because again, obviously this is going to be hidden at the back of my work anyway, so I don't need to fully cut the tail. Um, it's fine to leave a little bit. So I'm just going to do that on all of the tails of my work. Uh, yeah one more left to do make sure you don't do the one that's the long tail that you're going to use for sewing and obviously if you knew this was going to go on an item that's going to be used a lot or maybe a child's going to be playing with it then obviously feel free to do more than just the one knot but um, I know that this should be sufficient so I'm now going to just trim all of those tails And now if you turn back over to the right side, this is what your final piece should look like. So you've got your long tail for sewing left, but all of the other ones have now been cut and dealt with. So this is the finished spade. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and there'll be tutorials on my channel for all of the other card suits as well. So you can find them in my card suits mini series playlist.